to one of the developing stories around the election now, the decision by the Electoral Court that the political party, Mkwonto Wissizwe, was properly registered. Judges unanimously turning down the ANC's application, which said that the party was not registered properly. Judges said one of the main reasons for their ruling was that the ANC had not explained why it had not objected to the registration of the party during the time period stipulated under law. The person who ran our first two democratic elections as chair of the organization that became the Electoral Commission was Judge Johan Krekler, also a former judge of the Constitutional Court, currently chair of the organization Freedom Under Law. Judge, uh, good afternoon to you, sir, and thank you for your time. How do you view this judgment by the Electoral Court? Was the ANC just wrong to bring this application in the first place? Right, it appears that that feed has frozen to us at just uh, the wrong moment. Let's see if we're able to get uh, Judge Crickler back uh, for you uh, and just find out if we are able to hear. All right, Judge Crickler, I think you're back with us now. Uh, my question, sir, was, was the ANC just wrong to bring this application? The ANC had every right to make the application. It didn't bring it in time, and it brought it on a wrong reading of the law, according to the Electoral Court. Uh, it, the Electoral Court did what it had to do. It dealt quickly, it dealt firmly and clearly with what it thought was a, a serious mistake on the part of the ANC, not only in the timing, but in its decision to, to bring this particular application. And I suppose the law is there for a reason. You're given a very tight uh, amount of time in which to object to the registration. The ANC simply wasn't paying attention. Uh, Stephen, yes, but one must make the point that you're dealing with electoral law. Ordinarily, law, civil law, is between two individuals who have private rights and interests and claims against one another. Electoral law is a much more broad view of the law because you're not dealing only with the interests of individuals. In fact, you're not only dealing with the interests of political parties you are actually dealing with the interests of the citizens at large, their constitutional right to vote in free and fair elections. And that is why a, uh, an electoral court takes a much more pragmatic, a much more uh, purposive view of the law as it did in this particular instance. Ordinarily, a, a court, when somebody comes belatedly and asks for relief, urgently, uh, a, a court would be tempted to say, go away, you, you, you dilly-dallied, and you've lost the op opportunity to be heard urgently. In this particular instance, the court went beyond that. It not only found that the ANC had, had shilly-shallied, but also went into the merits of its complaint and decided that its complaint was not well-founded. And that is commendable on the part of the uh, Electoral Court. The ANC, as I understood their argument, part of it was that they said that, the, that MK had lodged an application. That application had been turned down, didn't have all the right signatures. And then they were able to supplement that application. So they were able to add to that application. And they said that the Electoral Act does not allow you to supplement an application or to add to it later. How did it, you view that argument? I mean, the Electoral Court obviously threw that out as well. Yeah, the Electoral Court said that you don't look at particular words, whether the supplement, to correct, to replace. You look at the registration of political parties. The major, major purpose of the Electoral Act is to enable citizens through electoral parties to take part in elections. You don't try to put handicaps in their way. You read the provisions constructively and flexibly. If they have failed to lodge a particular document, you don't have to apply all over again. You just add the document which you failed to add, uh, include in the first instance. In this particular instance, their list of, of signatures was found, found initially to be defective, and they replaced it with a uh, correct unobjectionable list of signatures. To, to you and me, I suggest it makes perfect sense. Why should they just have to start all over again? What's the point?
The judgment was first expected to be handed down yesterday, and then uh, the, the Electoral Court uh, actually said there would be a postponement, and it was handed down today. And, Judge, I'm sure you're aware we live in uh, uh, fevered political times. Um, MK actually said they issued a statement yesterday um, in which they said they, they questioned the reasons for the delay. Um, and I know an Electoral Court does run its affairs um, slightly differently. You know, often it deals with last-minute urgent cases. It, it, it doesn't quite use the same time frame as other courts. Um, do we need to worry when there's a delay in a judgment? And as far as I can see, there hasn't been an explanation from judges yet uh, for that delay. Does it matter if a judgment is delayed at all? Why on earth should they give an explanation and why is there a suspicion? What is supposed to have happened in the meantime? Elections lead to rumors and wild speculation. There is no basis in this particular instance to cast any doubt on the integrity of the process and of the judgment. Maybe the text wasn't ready. There are five judges who've got to agree to it. I have no idea why it was not delivered yesterday. But Stephen, please, we've got a very, very important set of elections coming up in May. Let's not heighten the tension with nonsense speculation and nonsense rumors and casting doubt on the integrity of the process. There's no reason whatsoever to raise any such question at the moment. I mean, we've seen political parties, it was MK who raised the question yesterday, we've seen other political parties already being quite critical of the Electoral Commission. And I wonder if maybe the Electoral Commission, just because of the state of our politics, through no fault of the Electoral Commission at all, is this going to be under a lot more pressure than ever before? Obviously, in 1994, there was a lot of pressure at the time. Um, but do you worry that we're actually going to see the Electoral Commission almost being treated unfairly, perhaps, by political parties in the next few weeks? Stephen, the Electoral Commission is the referee in the contest. Whether the Electoral Commission is honest or dishonest, complaining about it is going to make no earthly difference. I can see no point in political parties at this stage, months ahead of the election, already trying to cast doubt on the integrity of the commission with not a tittle of evidence to support them. Of course, the, A the IEC makes mistakes. They're not gods, they're human beings. And running an election is an incredibly difficult, technical, administrative, logistical, political, human undertaking. You involve hundreds of thousands of short-term employees you, who have to deal with millions and millions of documents in a very short space of time. Of course there'll be mistakes, and there may even be a crook here or there among the, 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 the numerous electoral staff members. But that's no reason to cast any doubt on a PR election such as ours is. A vote here or a vote there or 10 votes here or 15 votes there make no earthly difference. The election is a contest to see which party or which individual now gets the support of the electorate. Let's play it according to the rules. Let's keep uh, slander, gossiping, rumor mongering to ourselves and for heaven's sake, Let's get rid of the damned word we imported from America, rigging. God knows how you rig an election. I have run many elections in this country and across the world. I have not come across any way of rigging an election such as ours. I don't know how you do it.